Good morning guys, this is going to be uh, my everyday makeup video. I figured out which eyeshadow that I'm going to use, but I'll just decide which foundation I'm going to put on. Not yesterday, but the day before, I decided to have my first go, not myself, but I went somewhere to get some derma needling done, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more when I'm in my beauty room doing my everyday makeup. But my skin is a little bit drier than it normally is because of that and it'll sort itself out over the next week and also because of that I haven't been using any actives no vitamin C no BHA no HA or my retinol either just very basic just cleanse essence and a moisturizer as well this morning when I woke up I did think my skin was a little bit dry probably not as dry as people with dry skin but for me it did feel dry so I've popped on moisturizer I already put on sunscreen straight away and I'm actually going to put on just a little bit more now of my sunscreen my absolute favorite one this is the can make the other one that I wore yesterday because I didn't wear any makeup yesterday and that is the is it Alta? I can't quite remember the name, but I love that. It's a tinted one and it gave some coverage to my face as well as giving sun protection. So I really love that one as well. So I will link that down below if you want to take a look at that. But this Can Make one is just gorgeous. It has beautiful moisturizing properties in it as well. And I'm just taking a look in the monitor and I think my skin looks better now that I've popped that on. So for my foundation today, I'm going to have to choose something that is definitely more on the glowy side. And even though my skin isn't as dry as I imagine as some people that have that suffer from dry skin or really dry skin, I've sort of got a feeling now of what that's like. And I think I prefer my oily skin. But as I say, it's not too bad. It could get drier over the next day or two. But as long as I keep moisturizing quite a lot, throughout the day then it should be okay and if I wear foundations that are more on the moisturizing glowy side then that should be fine. So it's nearly about nine o'clock in the morning. I normally get up at half past five. I love the mornings. I have a coffee. I check my Instagram. I check my emails and then I also probably watch one or two YouTube videos as well and then at six o'clock I feed the animals i feed margo my cat and also the two dogs as well and then i put on a load of washing and i do a general tidy up i've also vacuumed this morning as well and just a few other things i like to get those things done early in the morning and then the rest of the day is mine really apart from maybe some of my business work and helping out tony in the background but if there's none of that to do today then I can just concentrate on some other things maybe getting some posts ready for Instagram putting things on my stories and other things like that so now I'm just going to make my second espresso for the morning is such a beautiful day out here it is really gorgeous we're coming towards the end of winter here now in New Zealand the sun is shining the birds are going crazy so what I'll do is I'm just gonna take my camera outside just for about a minute and just show you how beautiful it is out there mornings Margo it's sort of her crazy time till about 10 or 11 o'clock and then she has a little snooze before I give her a snack usually around about 12 o'clock so these are the cups that I always use for my espresso they do come in other sizes as well this is the brand this is Le Creuset 
and I just love them. I love the size because I like my espresso really strong. So it just seems to me to be the perfect size and it also helps keep my coffee warm for quite a while as well. I love this color. They have quite a range of colors because I put something on my Instagram stories the other day and someone said, oh, I love the cup. And that was the pink one. And I'm just looking for it now, but I think that one's in the dishwasher at the moment. So I've got the pink and this color. They've also got beautiful oranges and green. I think they might also have them in white as well but i really love them and i bought a bigger size one the other day as well because my husband doesn't drink coffee or tea but he does quite like hot chocolates and so the bigger size is sort of more of a mug size and it was just perfect for hot chocolates but i just think these these are just really beautiful so I've already ear wrapped my hair this morning as well. I did that probably about an hour ago and it was a lot curlier. I'll just take my glasses off. It was a lot curlier when I first did it, but I prefer it when it drops down a bit. So you just sort of more get more of a beachy wave with some body in it. And these sunglasses are Prada ones and they are really old. They're probably about 10 years old. Now about, I think it was over two weeks ago when i went up to auckland i went to chanel and i bought two pairs of chanel sunglasses and i am going to do a video on that just showing you a really good look of them i got a white pair and i also got a black pair as well now the reason why i've kept these sunglasses for so long is that i'm short-sighted so i have to have prescription friendly sunglasses and the chanel ones that i got are prescription friendly so i also need to make an appointment for the optometrist because i haven't been for a, probably about 10 years and they can just test my eyesight again and get the prescription lenses fitted in my new chanel sunglasses but i will do the video first just to show you what they're like but i think they're really gorgeous and i just wanted two pairs just a white and the black just so i can change it up a little bit i wear these all the time they're often just sitting on my head i wear them when i go outside and i wear them driving all year round the only time i have the plain glasses and they are probably about 15 years old and that's if i'm driving at night because obviously I can't drive at night with my sunglasses on but I'm looking forward to getting the prescription lenses put in my new Chanel ones because I think they're really beautiful. So Margot was just racing around like I said it's a bit of her crazy time this time of the morning and I usually brush her in the evening she's looking a little bit shaggy and I'll probably give her a wash this weekend as well. I wash her about every three or four weeks just helps keep her coat really beautiful so she's nearly eight months old now so she's still she's still a kitten i'm just so pleased that i got her because it'd been such a long time since i'd had a cat and it was really sad earlier this year when solomon passed away and i thought no i don't really want another dog we've got our bloodhound and we've also had to basically adopt another dog it was my dad's and after my dad passed away so now we've got ted as well and he's a border collie so that's really enough enough dogs and as i was saying i used to have cats i'm just gonna put margot down she'll get a bit restless and as i was saying i used to have cats and i really loved them and i do really think that i am a cat person solomon my newfoundland was really a one-off there was just something really special about solomon and i showed him a lot he did really well in the show world but i'm sort of been there done that and i'm over traveling around going to all the different shows but I really miss him but Margot is just a fabulous sort of replacement for him she's like a little Solomon and she does a couple of things that Solomon used to do as well it's really strange he used to lay sort of half inside and outside and she does the same as well in the evenings and the other thing that she does 
is a bit odd with other cats if they're by you if I go and have I'm lying down or sitting on the couch with cats they'll jump on you and beside you but with her she's on the floor and laying down on the floor sort of and that's what Solomon used to do as well so it's really interesting but I love having her in my life I just think she's absolutely gorgeous so now I'm just going to finish my coffee and then I'm going to go into my beauty room, sort out what I'm going to put on for my makeup. Like I said, I've already decided what eyeshadow I'm going to wear. I'm just going to go and choose a foundation that is just a little bit more moisturizing. So I'll see you a bit later in the beauty room, putting on my... So I finally decided on a foundation. I decided on the Dior the forever skin and glow i think that will be moisturizing enough i did put on another layer of sunscreen probably about 10 minutes ago like i normally do before i start my videos and for the primer i love the new chanel mattifying primer but i was gifted recently from laura geller it's the spackle it's the skin perfecting primer and this one is hydrating it says it moisturizes and replenishes i have used this and i really like it probably more suited for me in the cooler months or in the summer if i was going to wear quite a matte foundation but because my skin although it feels pretty good at the moment but because it's a little bit dry because of that procedure that i undertook then i think this is going to be perfect so I'm just going to put one and just a half pumps on. It is a really beautiful texture. It feels almost a little gel-like. It, Even though it's really moisturizing, it is beautiful and light as well. It's not heavy like a typical moisturizer. And I think it does give a really beautiful base so i've still got my sunglasses on instead of putting on a headband but it does exactly the same job at keeping my hair out of the way and as i was saying earlier this is how i have my sunglasses on during the day i have them on on top of my head just in case i go outside or just hop in the car and go driving they're always there and i know where they are so i'm just going to take one pump of the Dior Forever Skin Glow. This is in the shade, it should be, yes, it's in the shade 2.5N. And I'm gonna put this on using a beauty blender. I don't want it to go on too heavy. So a beauty blender just helps just shear the foundation out just that little bit more. But I think this is going to be perfect. So the microneedling or dermineedling, whatever you want to call it, I haven't done anything like that before. I've mentioned in a video, I think maybe was it earlier this year or last year, I did, where well, I do, get Botox. And in New Zealand here, we don't have numbing cream before you put Botox on. They just they just do it. I suppose it saves waiting 25 or 30 minutes for the numbing cream to work. And although Botox is it's a little bit painful, it's more like a sting each time. So I don't think it's that bad. And I've also had some laser to try and get rid of the sunspots. This one here has faded quite a bit. And I had some through here and they've faded quite a bit as well. And they were just to there so I inquired about microneedling and made an appointment and the girl that did it was really lovely so you go into the room and she has all this the bed that you lay down on all made up and it's winter here at the moment so it's quite cool the room was quite warm but you go in under the bed where they have a blanket and then a towel over the top and it's just really cozy. It left me there for a few minutes by myself. I probably would have fallen asleep. So when she comes in, she then asks if I had anything on my face and I didn't have any makeup on, but of course I did have my sunscreen on and I'd done my skincare for the morning, although I hadn't put on any BHA or any actives the night before since I was getting that done. And she cleanses my face and uses hot towels and it's all really relaxing. 
and then she gets the thing ready for the Dermanita and she goes, oh, I find this, she says, I find that it tickles. And I thought, oh, okay. You know, I've had the laser and as I said, I had the Botox. The laser felt like a very weak rubber band just flicking and I didn't find that too bad either. So she started on my forehead area and straight away I was like, what the hell is this pain? It was, I thought it was really painful. It reminded me of that scene out of the movie, The 40-Year-Old Virgin, where he goes and gets waxed for the first time. That is the reaction I was having inside my head, and I was physically moving my head. Now, I think they start with the forehead because there isn't much fat under there, so it definitely is a bit more painful. She said, oh... I don't find it that bad. I said, well, shit. I said, it's, <laughs> it's really sore. So she gave me a few second break and then she kept going. I think the worst part about it is when they do German needling, it's sort of not just across like that and then they go across. They almost, well, what it feels like is that they're cross hatching. So the pain just keeps getting worse. But then once she moved down to my cheeks, chin, even above the lip and on my nose, I didn't find it too bad. It still hurt, but it was nothing like the forehead. And also while she was doing that, they're putting hyaluronic acid into your skin just to fill it full of moisture. And then she also put a couple of other things in. I can't quite remember. <laughs> Probably because I was in too much pain when she was explaining it. But I think it was something more geared towards sun damage as well. So with the laser and then this, I'm hoping that these are going to fade quite significantly. So after that, then they put on a cooling mask and then they get a roller and go over the top. Because once they're finished, you can feel your skin, it's really heated up. But then once they put that mask on, everything starts to cool down. And then she put a tinted, it was a mineral SPF on me. And once I'd walked out, you wouldn't, I didn't look red at all, or even pink. It covered it really well. So despite the pain, I have booked in for two more. They do recommend three sessions, six weeks apart. And it will be the six weeks apart because that's when the cell turnover is. It's about every six weeks. So I go again in another six weeks. But at least I'm prepared for what it's going to be like. I think I would rather them, instead of them underplaying what the what the pain level is going to be, I'd rather say, look, this really hurts, and I will give you a break if you need it, but it isn't really pleasant, but it's not going to last too long. I would just rather they said that, because to me, it is certainly no way like a tickle. Now, I didn't have any numbing cream. Again, I think they do over in the States and other places. And I asked her about that. I just said, oh, I think overseas they put numbing cream on. She said, oh yes, she said, but then she said, we like to see people's reactions so we know sort of what pressure and what level to, <laughs> to do it on, which I, I sort of understand that reasoning, but no, there was no numbing cream. So I've got another appointment in six weeks and then another six weeks after that. And if you buy the three at once, it is a package deal. Basically, you get one for free. So one pain session for free. But I do think that my skin looks really good. Like I was saying, it is it's a little bit dry, but it actually feels really lovely with that foundation on. I still will powder over the top of my foundation, but I'll use one that isn't quite as mattifying as my favorite, which is the Chanel Natural Loose Powder. I've actually pulled out the drawer, a Guerlain one. And I've just done my eyebrows, so now I'm just putting some gel over the top just to hold them in place. The other thing is for the next week, it was two days ago I got it done, so probably for at least another five days, those actives and retinol I'm gonna keep out of my skincare. I'm just, I still double cleanse at night, 
but it's cleansing then I use an essence which is a raffle one that I've been using for quite a while and that was gifted to me and that is really calming on my skin and then I've just been putting a moisturizer on that again just has no actives in it whatsoever just to keep everything very calm and very hydrated and it seems to be working really well so far. So I've just popped some eyeshadow primer on and for the loose powder I'm going to use this Guerlain loose powder and with this one it has the puff inside and if you've seen my other videos I normally use a brush to put the powder on but with this I actually quite like using the powder puff and it always just feels a little bit extra. Now this can get quite messy so I just keep the puff on the top like that and then I just turn it upside down and then you get the powder on the on the puff and I just dot that on and then I just go over in, in a rolling type motion. Now this is quite heavily fragranced this powder which is typical of Guerlain. I think that the scent is really beautiful but just so that you're aware. So for bronzer I'm going to use the Chantecaux one. This is in Goa and I think this is a beautiful bronzer. Not the most recent collection but the one just before that I think they released the the lighter shade in this bronzer and I haven't got that and I didn't pick up that new one either. Actually I don't even know whether it's been released in New Zealand. I wouldn't mind trying the other shade with the bronzer. So if or when it comes to New Zealand I may pick that up but I know a few people were a little bit disappointed that it was it was different packaging for that collection but essentially it was the same shade. And for eyeshadow I'm going to use the Chanel Le Beiges. This is a Healthy Glow eyeshadow palette and this is in the One Light and this is new to me. I'm going to use about probably about three shades from this palette. All of them are satin shimmer type shades. It is really beautiful and I wore this the other day. I can't remember which video it was and one of my subscribers said would I do a video on it so that's why I thought I would include it in this video but it is really beautiful. Now I'm going to put it on using one of the Chanel brushes. This is number 200 this brush and I'm going to start off with the fluffy side and actually just before I do I will I'll swatch this on the back of my hand so you can take a look. So I'm going to start off with the top shadow and then move from left to right, top to bottom. So this is the top shade and this is top left, the top right and the two bottom shades, the one on the left and the one on the right. This is a beautiful lavender and this one has got purple in it and as you can see they are all satin shades. Some have a little bit more sparkle than others but it is a really beautiful palette. So I'm just starting off with this shade first and I'll try and do the exact same look that I did the other day. I didn't really note down which order or which shades that I actually used. I knew that I didn't use all five of them so I'll try and keep it the same. I'm pretty sure that I started off with this shade first because I remember putting it on thinking this shade just by itself would be really beautiful. Now I'm just swapping to the Raffin number three brush because I'm going to put that same shade, I'm going to run that under my lower lash line. Then I'm going to go into the deeper shade and I'm going to pop that in the outer corner and I will take it through the crease and just slightly above but I don't want to go up too high, I just want to keep this fairly soft and then again go back to the Rafa 3 and go into the shade, the deepest one and I'm just going to just run that just through here on the lower lash line. I'm just going to use the other side of the Chanel brush and go into the shade here. This is quite, this is a really beautiful 
beautiful pink shade. And then I have wiped down the wrapper number three now, and I'm going to stay with that shade. And I'm not going to put it on the inner corner, but I'm just going to just run it under the lower lash line as well. So I've just put on a little bit of eyeliner. I really just tight line just to show a little bit of depth in there and also just to make my lashes, once I've got mascara on, a little bit thicker, but really not much eyeliner on at all. So the mascara that I'm going to put on, this is the Laura Geller one. This was gifted to me and this is the Kajal Longwear Mascara. I've worn this quite a few times now. I'll show you the brush. I really like it because it's quite thin, has these little spikes on it that really catch onto the lashes. This doesn't clump, it doesn't transfer, it really stays put. I think it is a really lovely mascara. I'll just hold it up a bit so you can take a look at the wand. And just like with any mascara, initially the length of it is, I think it's slightly longer than my favorite Chanel Le Volume one. So initially I did get a little bit of product on my eye, just in here. But now that I've got used to it, it's absolutely fine. I think mascara is quite a personal thing. And I do think you need to give new mascaras a chance because you do get used to the wands that are on them and how you put it on. Because I know when I've used something like, I can't remember the name of it, is it the Lash, the YSL mascara, which gives beautiful volume. That has got quite a big uh, brush on it and it took me quite a while to get used to it. But once I did, I thought it was a really, really beautiful mascara, that one. And this one is gorgeous. I think it gives great volume, and it also lengthens my lashes to some degree as well. It's a really nice mascara. And for blush, I'm going to use a Laura Geller one. This is a serum blush, and this is a cheek tint, so it is quite sheer. I've got it in the shade Practical Pink. This was also gifted to me as well, and I also got one in a peachy shade as well. Now this has a sponge tip applicator, and they do come with a spare one, so it is quite easy to pull out, and you can actually clean it. I've worn this for a few days. I think this gives a beautiful soft look to the cheeks. So here is the packaging. Just pull off the lid, and it has a twist underneath to get the product onto the sponge. You have to do that a few times when you first use it. But after today, I think this is about the fourth time that I'm going to use it. I will pull this out and give it a wash, let it dry, and then pop it back in. I love it that you can do that. So to put this on, I've been using the Sonia G, this is the Sheer Buffer. You could also put this on with your fingers as well. So you could dab your fingers on the top and then tap the blush on and then just use your fingers or you can tap it straight on to your cheeks and then use the brush to sheer it out. Though the way when I use a brush, the way that I like to do it, I'm just gonna make sure there's product up there. I get the brush and just swirl it in there on the tip and then put the product on. So I picked up quite a bit. So I'm gonna put a little bit on the other cheek as well and then I just shear it out. But I think this is a really, really beautiful shade. I think it is gorgeous. You can even go sheerer than this if you want to. Just put less product on. You could tap a little bit on your cheeks and then just shear it out, like I said, with your fingertips or using a brush. I think it's really beautiful and the other day I did wear it with this eyeshadow palette and I thought both together looked really pretty. And then finally for lipstick I'm going to use one of my favorite ones for this year really and I've got quite a few of these now. This one is the Dior Addict Lip Maximizer and this is in the shade. This is 014 and this is Shimmer Macadamia. I picked this up not too long ago, that's why it's still in the box, but I have tried it. And it really is just the perfect pink shade. Got a little bit of brown in it as well. 
it's just absolutely gorgeous. I love these. I usually have one or two in the little makeup bag that I have inside my handbag for when I go out. These are just really simple to apply and most of the time I do wear a sheer shade on my lips and I just think these are just gorgeous. Here is the final look. And all together, I just think this is a really pretty, really soft, everyday look. I love this eyeshadow palette. I think it is gorgeous. I still think there's another Le Beige's eyeshadow palette that I haven't got. I think I've got nearly all of them. I'll have to have another look. I've also recently picked up the one in deep, and I really love that one as well. But I think this is just gorgeous, just really pretty colors. I think they go on beautifully, and there is quite a bit of pigment to this, especially with the deeper shade here, and even the first shade that I used, this one here. I think it went on really well, but I love the shades together. I think it is gorgeous. The foundation, the Dior Forever Skin Glow, feels really good on my skin. After that treatment, my skin is just a little bit dry. And as I was saying at the very beginning of this video, it's not dry like with dry skin, but it's drier than it normally is. So it feels a bit odd to me. But with this foundation on, it just feels absolutely beautiful and probably also what helped is the Laura Gala that skin perfecting primer because it's moisturizing but light and that probably helps keep all that moisture in and I really like the blushes as well as I said I've got two of these I think this color in practical pink is really pretty and I think they give a beautiful soft look to my cheeks and really flattering for mature skin. And the Dior Attic Lip Maximizers, I love them. And I think the shade is absolutely gorgeous. So that's it for today's video. I would love it if you gave it a like and subscribed. And I will see you next time. Bye.